Whew. Welcome to Greece. Yamas. Yamas. Yay. I'm completely surrounded. Kostas is uh, showing me the ropes. I don't, I don't know how I feel about it. Whew. Welcome to Greece. Good morning from Thessaloniki here in Greece. The last time you would have seen us, we were actually on a cruise around Guernsey, France and Spain. We then hopped on a plane and made it here. Um, very, very exciting. We're here with the Greece Tourism Board and there's a lot of exciting activities planned actually. Things that we might not have done before. I'm actually really looking forward to that but this is the second largest city after Athens here in Greece. It's nicknamed the City of Sweets. I don't know why. Dates back to like 300 BC. It's very old, there's a lot of history. I'm actually sunning it up right now on our rooftop um, at our hotel, which we will show you either later or tomorrow. But I'm very glad the sun is shining and I'm ready. I'm ready to explore Greece. If you told me a few months ago that we would go from a cruise straight to Greece, I would not have believed you. And I would not have believed how warm it is in October. It is so sunny, it's like 25 degrees, and we are heading out to grab brunch. Apparently Thessaloniki has a huge brunch culture, so I'm expecting some pastries. Thank you very much. Time to eat. This looks so so good so this is spana kopita my best greek pronunciation and it is essentially a phyllo pie you can have it whenever really but it is a brunch thing it's feta and spinach and it looks greasy it's huge and it's huge and this was one euro 80 which i think is very good if you're just going to pick something up i feel like i'd fill you up for the day mm. there's a lot of calories going on there's a hell of a lot of calories um but i mean this is this is lovely and i'm standing right next to the Aegean Sea, something I was completely not expecting. You don't think of with a city, do you? You just no. never put the sea and Beautiful cities together. Beautiful city, along the promenade, along the seafront, and I have a Spanakopita. We just wanted to say a huge thanks to Skyscanner for being a long-term sponsor of our channel. We are actually teaming up with Skyscanner to bring you three travel hacks that we can guarantee will change the way that you travel. The first one might be pretty obvious, but it's definitely one that we can learn from, and that is hand luggage. If we do go on a city break, we should definitely just take hand luggage. Not only does it save you money, but it's so much easier when you need to get on public transport. You also save time because you don't have to go through the check-in queues and drop in your bag. You literally can just go straight through to security. So yeah, hand luggage is a massive one. Saving money, saving space, and it's much easier to travel. The second travel hack that we absolutely stand by is to never exchange currency in your home country. We used to always do this and we learned the hard way because when you do arrive in the country, the exchange rate is often better. What we would recommend is maybe exchanging a small amount of cash in your country so that when you do arrive in your new destination, you have some money just in case. And then for your big transactions, we would definitely recommend to go to a currency exchange in the area that you're traveling to. You will get the better rate so you save money and you get the best out of the country you're traveling to. And the very last travel hack that we have for you is to use the Skyscanners Explore Everywhere button. So basically you just put your dates in, you choose the airport that you're leaving from and then you click Explore everywhere. You can see a multiple options of countries and cities that you can travel to and you can choose the best ones depending on your budget. Those are our three travel hacks that we think will completely change how you travel. Once again we want to say a massive thank you to Skyscanner for being our long-term sponsor and let's get back to Greece. I feel like I'm going to be eating a lot of Spanakopita for breakfast here in Greece and I feel like I'm going to be getting very fat at the same time. But just along the promenade is the White Tower which is supposedly the most famous site in all of Thessaloniki and I think we can go up to the top to get the best views of the city. Thank you very much. Thank you. 96 steps up. Let's do this. They said 96 steps, but it didn't say 
96 steps for a giant, and they're huge. We've made it. It wasn't as bad as I was expecting. Very big steps. They were but giant wow. steps. They were. They weren't. It was like 200 <laughs> normal sized steps. Huge leaps for mankind, but this is amazing. 360 degree views. Wow, all over the the GNC, up into the mountains, into the hills. Um, wow, Thessaloniki is beautiful. These views are special. 33.9 or 8? 33.9 meters high and it actually dates back to the 15th century. They say it is known as the White Tower because there was a prisoner that was kept here and supposedly to get his freedom it was painted white. Who knows? If I, that's we don't true. know if that is actually true. And in the distance, if it wasn't so cloudy, we'd even be able to see Mount Olympus. Yamas. Yamas. We couldn't not try a Greek beer. Nymphy, actually from Thessaloniki. And it's very good. We've come into Tribeca, beautiful, on the promenade, looking out at the sea. And actually going up to the tower was much better than I did expect. It was six euros each, slightly pricier, um, but the 360 degree views and the sun shining, being up the top uh, was really, really nice. There's a boat going past you right now, a pirate ship. Oh my gosh. I really want to go on it. I want to go on a pirate ship. I can be a pirate for the day. They were very nice, but very, very expensive beers for Greece. Five euros each for a small bottle. That is probably more than we pay back in London, but a beautiful spot there on the promenade. When you think of Greece, you think of Athens, you think of the islands, you don't necessarily think of Thessaloniki. It's definitely surprising us. A beautiful city, a promenade, a lovely, no, a lovely promenade. And we're even heading out of the city to check out a winery, from beer to wine. Let's drink some wine. Just a 20 minute drive outside of Thessaloniki is Gerovasilou. I think I've said that right. A huge winery, a huge vineyard. Um, and this is pretty cool. Like we've basically just stumbled across. Look at, look at this. All these grapes that are soon gonna be my wine. And it's um, like we've transported yeah. to somewhere completely different. It's yeah. just fields upon fields. It's so different. Vineyards upon vineyards. Yeah, um, we're basically going to have a tour and then what I'm most excited for is drinking the wine. The first step is the harvest the period when we cut the grapes. This is where the magic happens. Can you imagine just jumping in here and going swim for a swim? <laughs> I, I, I want to swim in here. Time for my favourite part, to taste the wine. Yamas. Yamas. Well, this is perfect and just what we were looking for in Thessaloniki. I'm joking, we didn't even know there was a vineyard. So this is 20 minutes outside amazing. The city. 20 minutes outside the city, dating back to 1981. It's a family run business. We've actually just been on a tour where they make the wine, where they crush the grapes. Um, also the museum where there's like a collection I'm of drinking, corkscrews. I'm drinking, I'm sorry I've started. Um, and now we get to drink out overlooking where all the grapes are grown and picked. Let's try it. Which one is this? I have no idea. One of them's a Chardonnay and one of them is made from the grapes that, that were going to go extinct. And the family saved not, it. But the family saved so it. So if it um, wasn't for them, we wouldn't, we wouldn't be drinking this. That's a very nice wine. Cheers. Not that I'm a wine connoisseur. Cheers. So this is 50% Malaguzia grapes. The grapes were going to go <laughs> extinct. So I can't believe that. Really, you're looking at, you're looking at wine history there. Prehistoric wine. If it wine. wasn't for this place, this, this wouldn't exist, and that would be sad. That would be a shame. But you know, I never understand what you're supposed to eat with, with, uh, with wine. Well, that's why we have a cheese board. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's good. I'm pleased it didn't go extinct. I don't know much about wine. We're sort of more experts on beer, but we do have a lot going on. We've got so many different cheeses, so many different grapes. I'm just going to... I have no knife and fork. Are you supposed I'm to gonna eat do this. straight away afterwards? I'm just going to have a cracker instead. <laughs> Matt was not the best at showing you how you're I supposed to do it. I panicked and just grabbed a cracker. So I've got a cracker, I've got some cheese, and I've got this like honey chili sauce. Does that work, honey and chili? Mm. It was so good. And then you polish off your wine. 
Good morning. As you can see, I'm in my lovely little robe. Yesterday the vineyard was amazing. So unexpected um, from Thessaloniki and I was obsessed with one of those cheeses. We ended up with more cheese than wine. More cheese than wine. I don't know if that's a good thing or not, um, but I really could have sat there and watched the sunset and stayed there all night. Well, it was more amazing. Ate all the cheese. Um, I need to find out what that cheese is, but I need to give you a room tour this morning. We're staying at the Onoma Hotel. The logo is like this bear thing which is pretty cute um and it's a very modern concept hotel we have an ipad that controls pretty much everything i can do the blinds tv aircon um so we have two single beds which is mine and matt's favorite because we love I having separate duvets um it's all very modern airy like we have our sofa area you've got coffee making area the robes storage and then the bathroom is split into two so you have your black waterfall shower you have the toilet and the sink in the middle and it's just a really lovely room we're actually heading an hour or so outside of Thessaloniki to check out the nearby countryside <laughs> And just like that, literally one hour outside of Thessaloniki, we have jumped into an off-roader and we are surrounded by water buffalo. Welcome to Greece. This is so magical. We had a 20 minute four wheel drive Jeep ride into the Kikini National Park. We are surrounded right now by buffaloes. I mean- They are huge. They are huge. I don't think I've ever been this close to so many before. A man's just like herding them through. Um, he's literally got his wolves with him. He's they're, got they his are wolves literally, They're not with dogs. Him. Yeah, they're, they're like- They're wolves. They're wolves and we're up on the watchtower now. Um, and yeah, it is unreal. The scenery is beautiful. This is magical. This feels like, it feels like I'm in the Serengeti and it's like the great <laughs> migration. I'm completely surrounded. I'm like 10 feet away from these beasts, these huge great water buffalo. There's flamingos over this way. There's pelicans over this way. I didn't even know Greece had this sort of wildlife and we are one hour, one hour from Thessaloniki. Matt, you are surrounded right now. I'm a little bit too close. I'm getting nervous. I actually think this spot might be better than the watchtower. I'm sat on top of our Jeep, just watching. Look at how close they are. I'm not even joking. Um, this is insane. This is like a, a, Greece, a Greek safari, basically. Who even knew it? I know, I didn't know it. To a cruise on a boat. And we are off at a very, very leisurely pace. And you wouldn't realise that this lake is actually artificial, but the star of the show has to be our captain. You could not get any more Balkan if you try. Sitting there, hand on the wheel, cigarette in hand. I love it. Thank you. Kostas is uh, showing me the ropes, teaching me how to be a Greek captain for the day. Am I doing okay? Am I doing good? It's okay? I'm not as good. I need the cigarette. I think I'm better. Who's better, Kostas? Me or... I'm Who's better. the better captain? Me or, or Molly? Oh no, I'm turning. Oh no. See, I think I'm better. <laughs> Yamas. Yamas. This is definitely needed after a very, very full packed day. I absolutely loved the Jeep and then being on the cruise um, was unreal. Didn't expect it at all. A 30 minute tour Costas around was, the lake. Was the Costas, star of the show. He was the star of the show. He smashed it out the park and now we're at a restaurant overlooking where we just were. It's called the Erodius Hotel. We've got a fixed beer. I've got amazing views. Got some Greek food. This is great. We've got a full-on Greek 
feast going on here. We have some deep fried zucchini, we've got some Greek salad, we've got some tzatziki, and we've got these, they called it a Greek honey ball. Cheese crusted honey. Yeah, unbelievable. Oh my god, it looks amazing. Here's grandma honey. They've just brought around so much more food and one of them is um, buffalo like meatball or kebab type things. I don't know how I feel about it after just seeing them all in the wild but you know you've got to try it while you're here. Um, with some mustard as well. It's a speciality. This is like pasta. Oh my god. Ooh. That is unreal. Now we have buffalo pasta. It's all going. I've actually tried buffalo before in Australia and it felt very tough. This is like super soft as you can see. It's gone. And it is basically just like beef. It tastes completely different to what I was expecting. It keeps getting better. So I thought this was just a pork sausage. It turns out that this is a buffalo sausage stuffed with buffalo mozzarella. There's a lot of buffalo. It's some combination. Like if you don't like mozzarella, I don't know what's wrong with you. Well, good morning guys. And how cool is Thessaloniki? The uni city, the hip, the upcoming city um, with the historical tower, with the vineyards not far away. Um, and then just driving outside of the city can take you to a national park to a safari with wild buffaloes, flamingos, all sorts of animals, the lake and then the boat cruise. I mean, it really does have everything that you could need and what a destination that we would never have thought of. We wouldn't have picked, but thoroughly enjoyed. Eating buffalo, again, not my top 10, but it definitely did taste different to the last time I tried it. Um, and that's the good thing about traveling, trying different things, things that you wouldn't have expected. But welcome to Halkadiki. We drove from Thessaloniki, made it to Halkadiki. We're on the beaches. We have some exploring to do of the coastal area. So we're really excited and we will see you in the next one in Halkadiki. Halkadiki.